Good afternoon, everyone. We have waited 50 years to do this. <laughs> Please be seated and be comfortable. I want to welcome each and every one of you that have come today to honor Robin and Wilma on this very, very special occasion. You know, one day a young minister was talking to an older, more experienced pastor, and he was asking him, you know, I'm so nervous about doing my first wedding, and, and, and so help me understand what I've got to remember and what to do. And so the older, wiser, senior pastor took the young pastor through all the different aspects of the wedding, and then he told him some very nice wisdom. He said, he said to him, now, if you forget what you're doing, you can always quote scripture. It's always appropriate to quote scripture. And so the young pastor said, that's very helpful. He, he, in a little while, began his very first wedding. And at a certain point, he forgot where he was in the order of service. And so he remembered the words of wisdom from the older pastor. And he says, it's always appropriate to quote scripture. And so the pastor, the young pastor, quoted the very first scripture that came into his mind. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> but that's not true in this case. Fifty years. You apparently know what you're doing. <laughs> so keep doing what you're doing. It's working. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving Lord, whose presence is the happiness of every occasion and whose blessing sweetens every relationship. I ask you to always be near Robin and Wilma, who have come to this lovely place to renew and recommit their lives in the honorable estate of marriage. Fifty years ago, they originally pledged themselves to one another, and you have truly blessed their marriage. Continue to sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. Renew and refresh them daily together for the journey which lies ahead. Grant them now in this sacred service and throughout their wedded life your love and guidance. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all the family and friends said, Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to have our scripture reading done by R.C. There is a mic somewhere up here. Yes, there it is. Come right up here, R.C. R.C. is going to read from the love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 10. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have no, not love, I have become sounding brass or a clang symbol or a clang symbol and though i have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though i have all faith so that i could remove mountains but have not love i am nothing and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be burned but have not love it profits me nothing love does suffers long and is kind love does not envy love does not parade itself is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail, whether there are tongues, they will cease, whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. Amen. Well done. At this time, Felice is going to do a, a beautiful piece on the violin entitled Meditations by Thais.
Amen. Amen. That was beautiful, Felice. That was Margie Neff on the piano accompanying as well. And did you hear God played the timpani in the background too? Yes, very nice. Very nice. Beautiful. My wedding homily is entitled The Binding Cord of Love. Four-year-old Susie had just been told the story of Snow White for the very first time in her life. She could hardly wait to get home from nursery school to tell her mommy. With wide-eyed excitement, she retold the fairy tale to her mother that afternoon. After relating how Prince Charming had arrived on his beautiful white horse and kissed Snow White back to life, Susie asked loudly, and do you know what happened next? Yes, her mommy said, they lived happily ever after. No, responded Susie with a frown, they got married. <laughs> In childlike innocence, that little nursery schooler spoke an in-depth truth without realizing it. Getting married, and living happily ever after aren't necessarily synonymous. Some marriages may still be made in heaven, but all marriages have to be lived out here on this earth. Heaven comes down to earth only as we work together. We must never forget that marriage is the art of two incompatible people learning to live compatibly. The increasing divorce rate is rapidly making America the land of the free, a visiting Englishman acidly observed. Yes, admitted his American friend, but remember the marriage rate is increasing too. That shows America is still the home of the brave. Robin and Wilma, we're all so very, very proud of you. Isn't that right? We're so proud of you for demonstrating that marriage can and does work. Too many people get married for better or for worse, but not for good. You understand, marriage is a lifelong commitment. It might help to see the marriage bond as a rope, not something to use to go hang yourself with, but something strong to bind you and your spouse tightly together. The marriage rope I'm thinking of today has four main strands. The first one is being able to communicate with one another. Communication has two sides, talking clearly and listening carefully. Let me illustrate. One day, a fellow went into a lumber yard and asked for some four by twos. The clerk said, you mean two by fours, don't you? The young man replied, just a moment, I'll go check. And he goes back to his car where his friends are sitting, they roll down their window, and he has a short conversation with them. After a minute, he comes back and says, yes, I mean two by fours. Then the merchant asked, how long do you want them? The fella says again, just a minute, I'll check. And he goes back to his friend's car to confer. After chatting with them for a couple of minutes, he comes back and answers the clerk. For a long time, we're building a house. <laughs> Husbands and wives must also talk clearly if they want their homes to last for a long time. Listening carefully and correctly is also very important. How many misunderstandings would never happen if we would only listen? One day, a young child misunderstood what the preacher said at his uncle's wedding, because later he was heard reenacting it in play. Rosemary, do you take this man for your awful wedded husband? Marriage can only succeed when there is good communication. The second strand of the four in our rope is having consideration for each other. Treating each other with dignity and respect goes a long, long way. 
Little things do count. Flowers, cards, candy, doing considerate things around the house. Always putting the interests and the desires of the other first. That's pure consideration. The golden rule, remember that one? Do unto others as you would have them do to you is still the best principle or policy to follow. Good marriages are full of consideration. The third strand in our marriage rope is participate in life together. The bride was a bit self-conscious about being a new bride and wanted to disguise the fact that they were on their honeymoon. So she asked her new husband while they were on the plane if there was any way they could make it appear like they had been married for a long time. The husband said, sure, you carry the suitcases. <laughs> one woman said, my husband is one of those do-it-yourself fanatics. When I ask him to fix something, he says, do it yourself. <laughs> Couples like Robin and Wilma, who have been married for 50 years, have learned many, many years ago that they are on the same team. One important strand in our strong rope is do things together. May God continue to bless you and your marriage, Robin and Wilma, as you bind yourself closer and closer together in the cords of love. And the last one is, of course, loving and serving God together. God invented marriage. He's the author also of love. Couples that pray together, as the saying goes, do stay together. No problem which any married couple can have is beyond solution if they're willing to get down on their knees together and ask God what to do about it. It's not a question of what the husband wants or what the wife wants, but always, always, what does God want? Listen to God's gracious promise. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. Loving and serving God together makes marriages last and grow and blossom. Robin and Wilma, would you please join your right hands together as you pledge yourselves to each other? And may I suggest to all of the couples here in the auditorium this afternoon, no matter how long you have been married, why don't you take this opportunity to take each other's right hands also and silently renew your vows as this lovely couple renews their wedding vows. Before God and these relatives and friends, will you, Robin, continue to have this woman, Wilma, as your wife to live together after God's ordinance in the sacred estate of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, cherish her in sickness and in health? in prosperity or adversity, and forsaking all other women, keep yourself unto her, so long as you both shall live, do you so declare? What? I do. <laughs> Will you, Wilma, continue having this man Robin as your husband to live together after God's ordinance in the sacred estate of matrimony? Will you love him? Comfort him, honor him, cherish him in sickness and in health, in prosperity or adversity, and forsaking all other men, keep yourself unto him so long as you both shall live. Do you so declare? You've got to say that a little louder. Of course, I do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Very good. Very good. Robin and Wilma, since you have before God and these witnesses solemnly made 
mutual pledges of affection and vows of fidelity, I, as a minister of the gospel, do pronounce that you are still husband and wife. You got to love that. <laughs> After 50 years, you got to love that. We have a special music first. Jackie is going to be performing Oh Perfect Love, and we just saw it displayed. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for Robin and Wilma and for the half-century of their marriage. Thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings and for all the favor that you have bestowed upon them during the past five decades. Thank you for all their family and friends who love them and appreciate them. And Lord, continue to bless them with good health so that their love will continue to grow and to blossom. For this we pray in our precious Lord and Savior's name. Amen. Brother Robin, you need not my permission to kiss your wife. <laughs> still my pleasure and honor to reintroduce to all of you today Mr. and Mrs. Robin Geslani. <laughs>
pleasure. Ray, you bet. You bet. That was fun. Great job, Larson. That's good for reading it. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. You bet. Good. You're very welcome. Wonderful. So much fun. Yes, indeed. That was beautiful. Very beautiful. I love that sir. That was wonderful. Pastor, thank you for the message. My pleasure. That was so much fun, wasn't it? God bless you.